The EPA reports that there are 1,270 Superfund sites across the nation. A Superfund site is a location deemed by the federal government to be an area in desperate need of assistance in cleaning up abandoned hazardous wastes. 48 of these Superfund sites are in Ohio alone. That means that almost 4% of all Superfund sites in the United States are right here in our own backyard. For Dayton, Ohio, this couldn't be any more true. With five Superfund sites, Dayton homes more Superfund locations than any other city in the state. One site that particularly has been hit hard by environmental injustice is the McCookfield neighborhood. With around 400 homes, numerous businesses, and two schools captured within the affected area, the McCookfield neighborhood is considered to be one of the worst sites in the nation. In 2002, Chrysler documented a volatile organic compound plume containing TCE under its plant at 1600 Webster Avenue. Final analysis concluded that an imminent and substantial health risk is not present. However, in 2006, both the Ohio EPA and the U.S. EPA became involved when Chrysler notified them that the plume was going off-site and into the surrounding McCookfield neighborhood. After multiple tests showed that both the groundwater and the indoor air exceeded acceptable screening levels, Chrysler and the U.S. EPA began installation of vapor abatement systems in residences above the long-term action level. As of September 2008, the U.S. EPA has installed 148 systems. The site was added to the EPA National Priorities List in April 2009, at the same time that Chrysler filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy. TCE, or trichloroethylene, is a solvent used for cleaning metals in a number of manufacturing industries. It is dissolved in water, but easily evaporates from surface water, becoming vapor in the air. In the McCookfield neighborhood, TCE enters residences through vapor intrusion, exposing those inside to harmful levels of the chemical. TCE can be linked to numerous cancers, including liver, kidney, and prostate cancers. It also has been linked to permanent nerve, liver, and kidney damage. However, the health effects of TCE are still largely unknown, which to many residents is one of their biggest fears. Our property values, of course, have plummeted, and we do have the abatement systems on the house. But the main issues have been health, and of course it is hard to attribute what the health situation is. But in my case, I had breast cancer three years ago. For a male, it was very rare. There's a couple of the gentlemen on the board that have different types of cancers and problems. And I guess the thing that really bothers you about this is because it is cancer, it's so hard to prove that it's coming from there because they can attribute it to all kinds of other things that you can't get any compensation for your medical um, needs because of that, because you can't prove it directly came from there. Within three months of buying the house, we found out about this, and they already knew it was in existence. We weren't told about it. Although the EPA and various agencies had said that we had had many pamphlets and mailers put in our mailboxes, we never received one. Had Jerry Bowling not happened to be walking door to door and letting me know about it, I would have known nothing about this. And I still have that issue. Jerry lets me know about the meetings and what's going on and keeps me updated. Um, with all the actions that are going on, but I still have yet to get anything from the government or anything like that. Uh, Be Vocal, which is Bear VOC area leaders, is basically a group of citizens that sprung out of the McCookfield Neighborhood Association. And we really started with the committee of the Neighborhood Association, and it was the Bear VOC committee. And we decided to get a more formal name that they actually meant what we needed to do, which was in fact be vocal about this issue that's affecting our neighborhood. Uh, in, ca in some cases, we wanted our homes to be tested uh, basically in the entire neighborhood so they could define the size of the plume. Uh, we also want uh, you know, health studies to be done, and uh, you know, we constantly are working for things like that. Um, you know, other obstacles are just being informed about the issue. Again, if it's a new resident, you know, do they know what's going on? Uh, for example, if someone is a renter um, and they move into a home, are they informed that, you know, that there's a mitigation system in their home and that the issue does exist? We've had cases where people have rented a home 
did not even know that there was an issue in that home? Well, I have a hard time speaking for everybody, but I have seen some landlords in what you call river rentals, a couple streets over that people don't know. Um, there is no payment system and they're not being told that I know of. So, but I do know on my street, which is mostly all uh, homeowners, except for two places, which are rentals on my street, and everybody knows, even the rental people. I think they want to sweep it under the carpet. I, I know things are a two-edged sword that if you bring out that this area is not a good place to live, that people are going to leave, you can't get new people in, that we can't get businesses in and build it up. So I, I understand that point from their point of view, but I also feel they have a responsibility to the people here and that this has been going on for 20 years or more. Um, it could have been stopped before it got that bad and then we wouldn't be in the issue that we had to juggle our health versus you know building up the community that we need to do. So, yeah, um, we, my son lives with my daughter now and we have to go over there and take care of him which is a hardship I'm um, traveling back and forth which would be easier of course if he was at home. I can't sell the house to, to move somewhere else with him. Our house went from $35,000 property value to fourteen. dollars um, The bank even is not too happy about having our loan at this point. I mean, we're paying it, but if something should happen and we couldn't make our payment, they can't get their money back. And they're not real pleased about it, so therefore we can't ever take out a loan for repairs that we might need on the house because of that and can't move. Um, I'd like it cleaned up, um, of course, and taken care of. I really don't think that's going to happen, at least in my lifetime. I'm pretty realistic about how things go with the government. So what I would really like to see is some legislation done um, to stop it. These, these companies are getting by with it. They know they're doing something wrong, and then they're able to walk away from it with no accountability. And it's not just here. It's everywhere. Although the McCookfield neighborhood is one example of environmental injustice, it is far from an isolated instance. Offenses like this occur in numerous locations across the nation many of which have not yet been discovered or are yet receiving the help that they need. It is vital that we put an end to reckless business practices so that the people of our country may have an opportunity to live their lives, not in fear, but in comfort. Apathy has no place in issues such as these. It is imperative that we crack down on careless environmental abuse. Let us set the example, Ohio, so that we may have a safer and cleaner world to live in.